was that on Tuesday? Vance, of course, has consistently praised Donald Trump, uh, talking about him often. Trump, last night, called Kamala Harris mentally disabled. He said that Joe Biden became that way. She was born that way. Do you think Kamala Harris is mentally disabled? Do you approve of that kind of language? I think Kamala Harris is the wrong choice for America. I think Kamala Harris is actually uh, as bad or worse as the administration that we've uh, witnessed for the last four years, Martha. You got 20 percent inflation. You got the average family spending twelve hundred more dollars a month. Congressman, do you approve of that language? Do you approve of that language? Donald Trump calling her mentally disabled, mentally impaired. So you don't approve of that. You don't. I think we should. St- I think we should stick to the issues. The issues are, Donald Trump fixed it once. They broke it. He's going to fix it again. Okay. That, then, the then let, let's talk about one of the issues. And one of the issues of, is, of course, migrants. I, I can't believe we're still talking about this, but the baseless c- claims uh, elevated by Vance and Trump that Haitian migrants were eating their pets. You know that Mike DeWine, even governor of Ohio, said that is just simply not true. If the moderators in the debate ask Vance about this, should he finally make clear it is not true? such a distraction. You, the people in the mainstream media want to put up these shiny objects to distract people from what they see happening every day. The economy is not Vance working for and everybody. Trump the border is wide open. This. Vance and Trump have talked about I, I'm this telling issue. You, they you got to focus on the issues. They, they will Martha, focus, on the, focus issues. on the issues. The issues are very clear. Let's talk about the Trump campaign because I want to say, I want to play something Trump said yesterday uh, in a speech ostensibly about Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's uh, visit to the border. Let's uh, take a listen. Kamala is mentally impaired. Joe Biden became mentally impaired. Kamala was born that way. If you think about it, only a mentally disabled person could have allowed this to happen to our country. Okay, so first of all, there are actual people out there with mental impairments, and that's insulting to them. Second of all, Vice President Kamala Harris is not mentally impaired. No, I just think she's crazy liberal. I don't question her. Uh, but what, 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 what do you think about that rhetoric? I, I just think the better course to take is to prosecute the case that her policies are destroying the country. They're crazy liberal. 400,000 people have been let loose in our country. 16,000 people convicted of being a rapist. 13,000 convicted murderers. And 400,000 of people generally convicted of crimes were released on her watch. It's not going to get better. So I saw that statistic. We dove into it, our fact checker. That statistic is actually over decades. So some of those people you're talking about are people that came into the country during Trump. And second of all, some of them are in prison. A lot of them are in prison, uh, not not ICE prisons, but federal prisons for their crimes. I can tell you this. The man who killed Lakin Riley in Georgia was released by the Biden-Harris administration on parole because they had no capacity at the border to hold him. That's not a reason to parole people. I promise you, there are men, women have been raped and murdered. People have been hurt by illegal immigrants released into this country without detention. It is a nightmare. It is crazy. It's crazy to boycott a speech by the Prime Minister of Israel to a joint session of Congress thinking it won't embolden Iran. It's crazy to withdraw from Afghanistan, hoping things will be different this time. Uh, Medicare for all, Green New Deal, crazy stuff. Okay. Now, I'm not saying she's crazy. I'm saying your your, your policies are bad crazy. Okay. Well, they're not my policies, and (laughs) there's a whole lot of things you said. I'll just say she didn't boycott. uh, She didn't show up. She didn't show up. But but let's focus on on Trump's rhetoric, because that's what I'm actually asking you about, because uh, the problems with the world are not Trump's rhetoric. They call him crazy. Pelosi wanted to invoke the 25th Amendment. Why don't you ever talk about that? So Donald Trump also said this at an event on Friday. If I lose, I'll tell you what's possible, because they cheat. That's the only way we're going to lose, because they cheat. They cheat like hell. Okay. so in point of fact, it is anybody's. Tell me if you disagree with any of the statements I'm about to make. In point of fact. Harris could win or Trump could win. True. It's anybody's race. True. It's, it's, a, it's razor thin. And whoever wins, in all likelihood, it will not be because they cheated. It will, I mean, I haven't seen any evidence of any cheating. Well, Mellon Balling was a problem with COVID. I hope we fix that. I certified the last election because I listened to the allegations of cheating. I thought it fell short in terms of uh, changing the outcome. 
I'm, I'm more focused on today and tomorrow, and here's what I would tell President Trump. When people look at the state of play, they trust you on the economy, the border, inflation, and foreign policy by wide margins. Focus on those Focus issues. on those and don't call Kamala Harris mentally disabled. That's, yeah. that, that's your advice. One last thing. He has not agreed to do another presidential debate. Mm -hmm. Do you think that he should? For example, uh, Kamala Harris has accepted CNN's invitation if they want to do another presidential debate. He liked the debate we did last time. He thought we were fair. He thought the rules were fair. Obviously, that was a very consequential debate. Should he do another debate? I'm going to leave it up to him, but I'd like to see it myself because I think she's a mile wide and an inch deep. Look what's going on in the world. The world is literally on fire. They don't have a clue. They're paralyzed by fear when it comes to Iran. The world that, that, that Trump left us when he left office was mortgage rates below 3%, a secure border, uh, 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 peace agreements, no, no war anywhere. I would like to see her explain how she's going to change things when she's been in charge for four years and hasn't changed anything. I'd like to know from her point of view, what did happen in the Mideast? Why do you think the world's on fire? Why do you think Russia invaded Ukraine? Have you not figured this out yet, that you're weak in the eyes of all of our enemies? And here's what I would say to Trump. If you do debate, if you do, do debate her, she is a mile wide and an inch deep, and you can prove that. All right. Uh, Senator uh, Lindsey Graham, a strong defense there of uh, former President Trump's policies, if not his <laughs> rhetoric on the campaign trail. Uh, tough talk from Kamala Harris out west, but is Arizona out of reach for her campaign? My next guest is campaigning. And I did uh, see the game last night, obviously, and the reception that he got. Uh, he's polling well in Alabama, but our, our polling shows that in Georgia, he's got a little bit of a problem. Um, there he is down by three points to the vice president. Um, and part of that is a gender gap with women who say they do not trust you or him, the GOP, on issues of abortion or IVF. This week, Ohio Senate candidate Bernie Moreno adding fuel to that fire with some comments he made there. Um, why is this messaging on that issue in particular not working? Working. How can the GOP, is it possible to fix it? Because women just don't trust you guys on that one. Involved in Republican politics. And today he's back with me now to discuss the latest on the presidential race in Republican news. Mr. Speaker, thank you for being here. We both have an anniversary. Mine's a little <laughs> sad. Yours is a little excited. <laughs> yes, one year of the show. Congratulations. Thank You've you. You've done a great job. I, it means a lot. Thank you, you so much. You would always frustrate me with questions, but I'll tell you what. I admired you because you're probably the hardest working reporter in the house and you do your research. Well, I appreciate it. You Thanks. won me over. Oh, I, it's, <laughs> it's nice of you to say. Thank you so much. I want to ask you about just about the presidential race yeah. first and Trump on the campaign trail yesterday. I want you to weigh in about this line of attack against Kamala Harris and your view of it. Listen. Joe Biden became mentally impaired. Kamala was born that way. <laughs> she was born that way. And if you think about it, only a mentally disabled person could have allowed this to happen to our country. Anybody would know this. So he called her a mentally disabled person uh, and questions her intelligence. Effective, well, effective line of attack? Well, or should he focus on something else? What you're doing, you're, you're using one little clip there and you don't put what was said before or what was said after. But what he did is, say he called her mentally okay. disabled. That, that's 100% true. But why is he? What was he talking about? It had just come out that under this Biden-Harris, and remember the responsibility that Harris had for the border, they have allowed more than 425,000 illegal aliens who are convicted of a crime, more than 13,000 who are convicted of homicide, murders, more than, if you are in charge in an administration and you allowed that to happen, I'm going to question your mental capacity. So, so it's, it's, you know, they want, obviously the border is central to this campaign. One of the things that he's been talking about, too, is this conspiracy theory. That's, there's no basis in reality. Haitian migrants in Springfield eating pets. They're not backing away from that at all. Does that kind of argument undercut the central argument you're trying to make here on the border? Should the, should the former president say, I was wrong? There's no Look, truth I, to that. I would continue to lay out the facts. That there's, no fa there's no truth to that. Let me finish my sentence. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you engaging. But when you ask a question, let me finish. Sure. These numbers have come from the Harris administration. 425,000 people have come here illegally that have been convicted of crimes. 
Third, I'm talking about the Haitian migrant. I know what pets. you're talking about, yeah. but I'm also making a point here because you want to pick one specific issue. You want to know why people are upset. You want to know why people are frustrated. You want to know why people say things they normally wouldn't say because it's unheard of that no administration have ever done that to our own nation, put us in such jeopardy, let known what they have done to the economy, let known what they have done around the world making us unsafe, where we had five embassies had to evacuate, what they've done be creating new 13 gold star families because they wouldn't list in their military in Afghanistan. We've now watched war in different But you're not re responding to this Haitian migrants eating pets. And the reason why it's, you know, it's getting into some of the language and some of your former colleagues. Look, look at what uh, Clay Higgins, who was a former member, a current member of, that, you know, of the House Republican Conference, said about this because thing that's not not true. There's no basis of uh, to back this up. He called the Haitians wild. He said they're eating pets, voodoo, nastiest country in the Western Hemisphere. He goes on to call these people thugs. Uh, your reaction to that? No, that's something I'd never say. He took it down from that standpoint. I would stick to the issues. I think you stick to the issues. Republicans have a lot place to go. But more importantly, America will be a safer place. Um, I want to talk about your uh, the last year. Uh, you, of course, these interviews are terrible for Trump. We have to understand these are all Trump interviews. At this stage of a campaign, most of the candidates' interviews are not done by the candidate because there are thousands of media outlets in the country. When you add up all the radio stations and newspapers and TV stations and not just the big ones that are national or even statewide, but every tiny little you know, radio station and newspaper. There might be tens of thousands of news sources. And these are all Trump interviews. These are all people that are supporting Trump, are Trump surrogates. Some of them are, are members of the Trump campaign, but they're all pro-Trump Republicans. And this is the best they got. This is yet another endorsement for Harris because it showcases that when Kamala sends Democrats... And that's not just, you know, progressive Democrats, more moderates to speak on her behalf and to speak on her campaign's priorities. They do a good job. They take the tough questions and they answer them well. Might not always love the answers. They answer them well. Republicans here are sounding like maniacs. And even the, the, the hosts across the, 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 the divide there, Fox, CNN, whatever, None of them are buying it. Basically saying, you continue to insult people, you spread the cats and dogs lie, uh, or you defend it. And frankly, as noted there by the Fox host herself, women just don't trust you. And a heck of a lot of the other people don't trust you. So Donald Trump was sitting there this morning at Mar-a-Lago, or, or wherever he is right now, watching that on TV watching his interviews be an absolute mess.